Hey guys, I'm going to show you why the lottery is a tax for people bad at maths. This will be based on the UK lottery, which is why I said maths and not math, uh, but it applies to all lotteries nearly all of the time. So let's do the maths. From October 2015, they increased the selection from 49 numbers to 59 numbers, and they doubled the price of a ticket. For a £2 ticket, you need to pick six numbers between 1 and 59. If all six come up, you win the jackpot. So the draw is underway and you're waiting for that first number. Since the order the numbers come out don't matter, any of the six numbers you've got could come out first and you'd be happy. There are 59 balls in there, so you've got a six in 59 chance of matching the first ball. The ball is drawn and it's one of your numbers, hooray. So now you have only five selections left that you'd like it to be. And since one ball has come out, there are 58 in there. So your odds of matching the second ball that comes out are five in 58. So you match it again and the process continues. Now you're left with four balls to match from 57, then it'll be three from 56, two from 55, and then just one ball out of the remaining 54 to hit that jackpot. What we have now are six fractions, but to find out the one fraction that represents your odds of matching all six numbers, you're going to need to multiply all the top numbers together and all the bottom numbers. The top numbers are known as the numerators, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, multiply them together, you get 720. Uh, and then at the bottom, the denominators, multiply them up, you get a very large number, 32,000 million. The format we like to hear it in is odds of 1 in something. So you need to divide the top number and the bottom number by 720, and that gets you roughly 1 in 45 million. And that's your chance of winning the jackpot. Imagine your £2 ticket is for a coin toss, so a 50% chance of success. For it to be a fair game, you would need £2 profit every time you won. In other words, a £4 return because the ticket itself was £2. So you've got a £2 ticket for the lottery and the odds are 1 in 45 million. So what should the jackpot be? That's right, the jackpot should be over £90 million, but it rarely is. Now, it isn't just win or bust with the UK lottery. You can match five balls in the bonus, four balls, three balls, even matching two balls and you get a free ticket. So your odds of matching just two balls are much more favourable, almost one in ten. Here are the odds for three balls, four balls, five, and five in the bonus. What we can do now is work out something called the expected value. That is the average amount of money you would expect to win per go if you played the lottery an infinite number of times. So you've got roughly one in 45 million chance and we'll call the jackpot 20 million. Based on the recent draws, I've picked some example payouts for the other numbers that you can match. I've done rough calculations for your chances of winning everything below the jackpot and you need to multiply each prize by the probability of it happening and then add them all together to get the expected value. In this case it's around £1.35 from a £2 ticket. This is good business because you don't want to pay out more in prizes than you take in from ticket sales. However, 1 in 45 million doesn't mean that we need to play 45 million times to win in fact, you'd be really unlucky to buy a ticket for 45 million consecutive draws and only win the jackpot on the last one. So we're going to work out how many draws you need to have a 50% chance of winning. Let's start with the chance of matching two balls and winning a free ticket. If the odds are 1 in 10, you might think you need to buy five tickets to have half a chance. So let's see. The probability of winning in any draw is 1 minus the probability of losing in every draw. So if you've got a 1 in 10 chance of winning, then that's 0.1, and your chance of losing in any draw is 0.9. If you play two draws, then your odds of losing in both is 0.9 times 0.9, which is 0.81, and you're going to do 1 minus 0.81, which gives you a 19% chance that you won in either of the draws or both. So we have to see how many times we need to multiply 0.9 by itself before we get below 0.5, meaning that the opposite, the winning chance, is above 0.5, in other words, more than 50%. So let's do 3, 4, 5, 6, and the magic number is 7. After 7 draws, we've passed the halfway point, and there's only a 47.8% chance that we don't win on any, and a 52.8% chance that we win on at least one, or up to all 7 draws. So let's do the same with the jackpot. 1 in 45 million is this very small decimal here, and we're going to do one minus it to give you the odds of not winning the jackpot in a single draw. Now, how many times do we have to multiply that by itself before we get below 0.5? Let's try halfway, we'll call it 23 million. So if you play 23 million times, 
you've got a 60% chance of not winning the jackpot, therefore you've got a 40% chance of winning the jackpot. Let's try again, maybe 30 million games. That's getting us closer. We'll try one more, we'll try 31.25 million. I don't know why I've picked that number. Oh look, it works. We've got a 49.98% chance of not winning, meaning a 50.02% chance of winning the jackpot. Whew, we can stop playing. And if we do both the Wednesday and Saturday draw from when this new system was in place, we have our 50.02% chance of winning the jackpot by the year 301,470 AD in mid-March. So assuming there's no inflation, you can collect your prize, which is 20 million pounds. Before you start celebrating, we should work out how much you've spent on tickets. So you've played the lottery 31.25 million times, two pounds a ticket, 62 and a half million spent on tickets. So even though you've just won the jackpot, you're 40 million out of pocket. So let's do one last one. What are your chances of winning the lottery before the cost of the tickets outweigh the jackpot itself? So if the jackpot's 20 million, that buys you 10 million tickets. We're gonna take the probability of not winning in the draw, multiply it by itself 10 million times, and that gets you 0.801. So an 80.1% chance of not winning, meaning a 19.9%, roughly one in five chance that you're going to win the jackpot before the cost of the tickets outweigh the jackpot itself. But hold on, what about the smaller prizes along the way? Well, that's where expected value comes in. And at £1.35, you're expected to lose 65 pence per ticket. If you go for the 104 draws over the year, then you're going to pay £208 to win an average £140.40, meaning that you've got a net loss of £67.60. Now, that was picking a jackpot on the high end for the UK. Sometimes it's under five million. You can look at the statistics for ticket sales and see what fraction is paid out in prizes uh, in this case, it's around 57%, meaning that your expected value for a £2 ticket is £1.14. I am not saying don't buy tickets for the UK lottery. Billions are spent on great projects across the UK, so buying a lottery ticket is a charitable act. Just don't expect to get your money back. Thanks for watching, guys.